Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is Saturday which means it is time for another Inspired Saturdays collaboration here on my YouTube channel. I hope you'll stick around, find out who inspired me this week, and find out how you can go see how I inspired her. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you're new to my channel or new to Inspired Saturdays, I'll tell you a little bit about it before I get started. I like to team up almost every Saturday with another crafty YouTuber so we can choose a project that the other one has made and be inspired by it in some way to create a new project. If after watching today's video and you are a crafty YouTuber who would like to be considered for a Saturday, I do have a video linked in the description box below that gives you some details. Now please keep in mind that video was recorded in 2020, but the application has been updated for 2021. I am currently looking for partnerships starting at the end of April, and I would love to have you apply. This week, I am being inspired by Candice of Can Doodle Creations. I recently found her channel on YouTube and subscribed, and then it was almost that same week that she was a guest on Mary Gunn's Craft Roulette. And let me tell you, she seems like such a sweetheart. She makes lovely projects, and if I was like 15, 20 years younger, I would love to be her crafty best friend. Now, I have her YouTube channel and her Instagram account linked in the description box below, so make sure you check those out, get subscribed, follow her, lots of eye candy. I know you're going to like her. Today, I'll be taking inspiration from the project that you see up on screen. I will have this Instagram post linked in the description box below so you can go look at it a little bit closer if you want to. What drew me to this card today and what you'll see later in my card are the image with the halo around it and that frame. I just thought that those were some pretty neat elements and I wanted to bring those into a card that I'm going to create. Now don't forget when you're done with my video today at the very top of the description box below is a link to Candace's video and I don't know yet what she's going to take inspiration from that I have made but I can't wait to find out with you. Before I get started on the process, I'll tell you the main products that I'm going to use. As always, if I add anything later on, I will be sure to have that in the voiceover. But if I ever leave you with any questions, leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For my focal point today, I'm not going to be using a floral to color in like Candace, but when I was rearranging my room over the last couple months, I rediscovered this silhouette stamp that I had from close to my heart. I just love all the fun little ladies and I will be using this girl right here along with the sentiment that says be yourself everyone else is taken. One thing I would like you to take away from today's video is this stamp set like I say often is probably you know 15 years old maybe not quite that old but definitely more than 10 and you know what it still stamps I can still use it make sure to look back and kind of rediscover your stash and see how you can use your old stamps in new ways for my ink halo I will be using Gina K designs tranquil teal ink and I did go ahead and pull out my blue blending brush say that five times quickly because I seriously had to say that five times before it made it onto the video I will be doing some embossing of my card base, so I got out this Doris Chevron embossing folder. For my frame, I'm going to be using kind of a brushed gold metallic cardstock. For my die cutting, I got out my Hero Arts Infinity dies in rectangles. This is one of my best purchases ever, I have to tell you. Let's get crafty! Because I will be ink blending over the image, I do want to go ahead and stamp this first thing so it has some extra time to dry. 
I will be stamping it with Memento Tuxedo Black ink onto Strathmore Bristol Smooth for a nice blend. Now this paper does have two different sides. One is a little bit more rough, so I will be stamping on the flatter or the smoother side. But it's not perfectly smooth, so I did go ahead and bring in my Misty so that I will be able to stamp it a few times until I get a nice solid image. Not only have these stamps not been used too much, but my Memento ink pad is pretty dry, so I knew because of the texture on the paper and the ink that I would definitely want to use my Misty for this. Now I did pull out that die that will be the biggest on the frame later just to make sure that my placement of my stamps was good before I inked those up and started stamping. I think I ended up inking up and stamping this image and sentiment three times until I had a nice solid black. Because the center of the gold mat will be covered by the stamped piece, I'm going to be cutting my gold frame from the middle of that. This is a great way to save on cardstock and paper, especially when it's something specialty like this. I chose the fourth and fifth from the smallest for my frame. To hold these dies in place while I do my die cutting, I brought in some scotch blue removable tape. This will hold the dies together, but it will also, when I pull it away from the cardstock or pattern paper, it does not ruin it. I centered those as best as I could, and then I ran these through with the metallic cardstock on my cuddle bug. To add some dimension and height to the frame, I did go ahead and bring in two scraps of white cardstock and I ran this through with those same dies so I could create two layers of frame to glue behind that gold one. Because these frames are pretty intricate, I did bring in my art glitter glue with that fine tip point to adhere these pieces together. Now I have talked about it before, but I do keep that glue bottle charm in my glue bottle when I'm not using it. Those beads on the top have kept me from losing that pin so many times. If you're interested in finding out more about that, I will link the crafty YouTuber below who I bought mine from. While the frames dried, I went ahead and brought in my card base so I could do the embossing. I do have a score line on there so I know where the halfway mark is. So what I do is put my card front into the embossing folder and line up that score line with the edge of the design on the inside of the folder. I just like the extra texture this gives the front, especially since my white border is kind of large. Here's a little close up of that so you can see the difference. Now that my stamped image has had time to dry, I'm going to be doing my ink blending. I got out a scrap of white paper and I am protecting my work surface with a cutting mat from the Dollar Tree. For my blending today, I just want to create kind of a halo around the silhouette. So I start with some ink on my blending brush and then in circles, I just blend from where the silhouette is out. That way if I do have any odd places or darker places of ink, it's kind of covered up by that stamped image. Once that ink blending was done, I brought back in my gold frame, added more adhesive to the back of this, and then I have placed it around the silhouette image. I wanted to make sure that I didn't cut off the silhouette's head with the frame, so once I had adhesive on the back of that, this got placed toward the top, and then just like in the original where the flower kind of hung out from the bottom of the frame, my silhouette's legs are hanging out from below the frame. After the frame had some time to dry, I could then put my card together. I matted my stamped piece with that gold card stock, and then for some extra dimension, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarters inch width to add this piece to my card front. I added three strips on the back so it would be nice and solid, and then this was just centered in that front. 
There is quite a bit of shine on this card with all of the gold, but I decided that I wanted to bring in a little bit more and tie in that teal from the ink blending. So I brought in some sequins that I thought matched that nicely, and I am going to use these mini glue dots that are leftovers from Stampin' Up! kits, and I place five glue dots on the front of the card, and then I place a sequin on top of each one. While I finished doing that, I thought this would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. Thanks to all of you who have been taking the time to answer these. I've loved getting to know you better. Today's question is, what is your favorite finishing touch to add to your cards? Is it bling? Is it gems? Is it glitter? Is it ink splatters? Let me know in the comment section below and make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and want me to see it. For me, you know that I like some bling and most of the time I probably use sequins or gems. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired by Candace today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go see what Candace created. Her link is at the very top of the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.